Hello and welcome back. Okay, guys. So let me explain the general idea of what we have here. So what we want is if I go to my uh, uh, browser here, what I want us to have is clean URLs. So what I mean by that is that we don't want to have a URL that's like this index.php and then question mark. We have a get variable, which is equal to something and another get, which is equal to another thing. This would perfectly be fine since this is just an application that doesn't require to be uh, indexed by Google, for example. But it's just good practice to create clean URLs. So I'm just going to lead you down that path. What we want instead is just to have, uh, let's say you are trying to see students. It will just be slash students and then slash the student ID like that okay or slash the uh, subject and slash id something like this so this url is a bit cleaner I, i'm sure you can agree with me so how do we create this clean type of thing so since we are redirecting everything to the index page this becomes very easy and that's not the only thing we're doing if i go back to my ht access folder file here what we are doing is we are telling it to get the URL string that is returned and put it in a get variable called URL. So you can change this to anything. You can change it to A. You can change it to copy to URL. It doesn't really matter. This is just a variable. So we just need to know that our query string or whatever the user has typed in the URL is now put in here. So that's how we can get it. Okay. So let's close that. And here let's create a class because we want to use object-oriented programming, of course. So this will be the main app file. Okay, so this is the class app. Let's use a capital P there, like so. And it doesn't extend any other class, so let's remove that. We do like the constructor, so I'm going to leave the constructor there, but uh, no need for any arguments. We're going to leave that B. Now, I want a few arguments here. They are all protected because they will be used only inside this. So I'll say protected or I can say private. But let's leave it at protected like so. We're not going to uh, extend this class anyway. So private is fine as well. So protected, uh, this is going to be the, let's see here, controller. So I'll explain this a little, in a little bit. So just bear with me. This one will be home. And then let's duplicate this. This one is the method. And the method will be index. Okay. So like I had said, the format of our URL will be like this. Let's say we have a website, www. It's dot my website uh, dot com like this okay so my website.com if i say slash students like this okay and then slash um class name maybe class or something and then id at the end so this is a sample of how the url might look like so what i want to do is the moment it sees this this is the first variable here it should know that this represents a class name. Okay, so this should represent a class name and this should represent a, a function inside that class. So there's class and then there's a function. And then this is just a parameter that we will pass in to that function like here. So if I have extra stuff here, they'll all be passed in as params here inside that function. So the reason we're doing this is to make things easy to do so that if I want to create a new page, let's say it's uh, my website.com slash, um, I don't know, articles, for example, all I need to do is create a class called articles and then it will run. Okay, articles and then make sure that there's a, uh, a function named the second parameter here and everything will run smoothly. That way I don't have to go physically create uh, a new page, try to connect it to the website, etc., etc. 
this format works really well. So for now, we have our app and we have the constructor function. Now the constructor function runs immediately. We load our uh, app here. So what I would do here is let me do protect it again and say params. This one will be equal to an empty array like so. And save. Okay. So these params will be the ones that are given to every function and the controller, we need to have a default method, we have a default as well. So things are good so far. Now here from the constructor, I just want to echo construct like so. That way we can see that we are, we've reached here. So in order to activate this, if I just go here and refresh the page, I'll see nothing because this is just a class and I'm not calling it. I have to call it for it to run. So I'll go to the index page. After including everything required, I'll just say app is equal to uh, new app. Like this. Okay. So now I'm calling it. So it's going to run this time. This is pretty much what we will need only in our index page. So I'm just going to refresh and you see construct. So this means this app has run successfully the moment we activated it. Okay, good. So now that we have that, let's add. So this one is a, it's always a public function, right? Public. Well, let's create another private function here. Okay, so private function and uh, actually we don't really need this. Let's just do everything in here for now. Or maybe let's add a function. It's better this way. Get URL or let's just say uh, clean. No, I think get makes more sense. Get URL like so. And save that. So we want to grab the URL from here. And what I want to do is just print our here, the get URL. So I want to run this thing here. Now, in order to do that, I'll use the this keyword like this because the function is in the same class. So this get URL like so. So all I'm doing is printing the result of this. So for now, I told you that uh, the, uh, what's this, the URL, the get variable, so I'm just going to say print readable, print R, so that we can see something here again, get like so. So the get variable, I'm sure you know uh, what this is. This is the one that gets all the parameters from the URL and uh, adds them to an array. It creates an array of those. So I just want to see what's in the URL right now. So if I refresh the page, this is what I get. So you see this URL here this URL. Let me do this instead. It looks much better. I go pre-tag like that. Okay. Let's come back here and refresh. Okay. So you can see that the, this is an array and it's got one item called URL. So where is this URL coming from? Well, it's coming from the HD access file. So if I change this to A, for example, like that, and if I refresh, you see that now it's A because this is what I told it. So I'll undo that. I told it to get everything in here. So you see after public, everything in here is also in here. So if I refresh now, you see it again. So this is good because if I write something like students slash uh, subject slash 234, uh, you see that URL here. And so we can use this URL to retrieve the specific information that somebody is uh, trying to get from the URL. So without wasting much time, let's proceed. So I'm going to go back to the app here. Now that we know what's in here, all we need to do is uh, return. Let's return an, ex an exploded version of that. So let's explode. Now explode is going to use the slash to put every item between those slashes into an array. Uh, yeah, into an array. 
So let's just do, use the get like so. So return explode get like this. So no problem here. Let's come back here and see what the result is. So it's saying uh, uncaught type error explode. Uh, string must be of argument two must be of type string, but what was given it was an array. Uh, wait a minute. What is it saying here? explored argument to string must be of type string should it shouldn't it be an array oh yes it should be a string sorry that's my bad i'm confused it should be uh, that url that we're talking about there sorry about that so what we are doing is we are grabbing the get URL that I was showing you earlier, that string, and then exploding it into an array. Sorry about that. I got uh, sidetracked a little bit there. So zero, you see now we have student. Inside one, we have subject. Inside two, we have one, two, three. This is matching the URL that I have at the very top here. So this is very nice because now we can say, okay, let's find a class named student. Let's find a function named subject inside that class. And then let's use this one, two, three as the ID to get a particular student that this person wants. Okay, so that's what it is. But then there's a few problems here because if at the end we have a, an extra slash or two, if I press enter now, you see that I have an empty array here. I don't want that. So I need to trim all the slashes at the end. So what I'll do here is just say trim like so and trim that at the end. So trim comma to tell it what to trim. So that slash like so. So I should lose this number three now if I refresh and that number three is gone. So all the extra slashes at the end are ignored. That's good. And then the other thing uh, is to sanitize because sometimes people will put very strange characters in here. We must get rid of them. Let's see here, if I put a space, will that be? Okay, so there will be a space there. Let's see what happens when we sanitize this data. So what I want to do is to sanitize this, right? Sanitize it and then explode it. So I'm just going to use filter var to sanitize it. So it's filter underscore var. And then the variable that I want to sanitize, which is this trimmed version here. So I'll just put a closing bracket there and that would be nice. But filter var expects a parameter to explain how to filter this. So it's going to be filter uh, in capital letters, filter underscore uh, validate. Actually, uh, it's sanitize. And then underscore URL like that so it should change to italic like this then it means you've got it right okay so save that and let's refresh uh, now it's going to sanitize the data accordingly so that we don't get any funny characters in there so now we have a return value that is an array of what the contents are at the very top there so if i now um actually it's already showing that let me just echo out some pre-tags so we can see it properly, like so. Okay, refresh, and there we go. So we have these items here. Very nice. So if I add some extra items here, let's say A slash B slash C, D, and then we'll have this like so. So this concept, the reason why I've taken so much time on this is very important to understand what's going on here. So all we are doing here to summarize is that we are getting, uh, we are redirecting all traffic to the index page. That's important. This is why we can ignore the index page at the top there. If you've noticed, we have no index.php there. Okay, so that makes for a cleaner URL. And then the second thing we're doing is we are getting all the parameters that are in here and separating them using the slash. That way we have them one by one like this. This means we can get each one of them and use them for a specific purpose. That way the URL will mean something. Okay, so hopefully that is clear enough. And I will see you in the next video where we utilize this data.